Hi, my name is Chris Tyus. I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio Code team. Visual Studio Code is a redefined editor, optimized for cloud and web applications. It runs natively on Linux, the Mac, and Windows. And let's take a look. So we're going to look at two applications today. The first one that we're looking at here is an ASP.NET v5 application. I've already scaffolded out a simple application, and right out of the box, there's a few things that you can notice. Without having to do anything, I can come in here and I get a great IntelliSense experience um, for writing code in my startup, for example. So I can say console, system.console.writeline, uh, and we're going to output a little bit of um, diagnostic information. But you notice I typed in WL, so we get camel casing searching through our IntelliSense list. So we'll choose WriteLine. As I open up the parentheses here, you can see all of our overloads, and we can use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through them. We'll just say that, hey, we're in startup. Um, I can do interesting things like access other uh, files throughout my workspace. So if I come in here, I've got a class already created called user. So I can say var u equals new user. And as I type u dot, I can see IntelliSense for that. So first name equals Chris. And we'll say u dot last name equals Dias. And once I've done that, um, it's not only about writing code, it's also about understanding and navigating your code. So a few things that I can do here. I can hold down the control key. As I hover over um, objects inside my code, I'll get a nice little pop-up. It shows me a preview, uh, in this case, into the user class. Um, same thing for first name or last name. I could right-click on user and say, go to definition, peak definition, find all references. So we'll do go to definition. This will jump over to my user class. And you can see here's my first name and last name fields. And you can see the references that we created back over in startup.cs. So I'll click on the references. We can see startup. We'll navigate back to where we started. Now, Visual Studio Code is, is very keyboard friendly, very keyboard oriented. Um, we have this notion of a command palette. So I'll bring up com uh, command P. And this will let me uh, access anything throughout my environment. So I'll back up and we'll press question mark. And we can see that we can show and run commands throughout the entire application, uh, throughout the entire environment. I can show errors and warnings across my uh, uh, application. So you can see we have a bunch of uh, warnings that we could go clean up. Um, I can do git commands. I can outline my file. I can navigate by category, things like that. And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to run this application. So we're going to say Kestrel, which is the server to run an ASP.NET uh, v5 application. We'll open up the browser. And we will browse to localhost 5004. And there's our ASP.NET v5 application that we quickly created in Visual Studio Code. So let's change gears a little bit. So this is a, an ASP.NET v5 application. The other application that I want to show you today is a, a node and express application, which, again, I've already scaffolded out. So we can just jump over to that folder. It's important to note that uh, Visual Studio Code is folder-based, not project-based. So you simply open up a folder, and then we start to understand what your code looks like. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Um, now, a couple things uh, to note here. We're in a standard JavaScript file. And uh, Visual Studio Code uses TypeScript as the engine for a great JavaScript IntelliSense experience. So I can come in here and say var message equals hello. And when I do IntelliSense on message, we can see that we understand that it's a string. So we provide you a rich IntelliSense experience. Uh, I can change this back to a number. And then when we do IntelliSense on message, we can see that it's actually a number. Because we understand what your JavaScript code uh, looks like because we pass it off to TypeScript, and it can help us uh, do that. So the other few things you see here, uh, by default, then we get uh, underscore squiggles uh, to show a warning. And so we don't understand what dir name is. It's not defined anywhere. Uh, but we can do something like this. We can see there's a little light bulb. I can press command dot, and that'll bring up an action menu. I can do things like uh, mark dir name as global, and that'll tell the compiler, hey, we understand what uh, dir name is. Uh, but a better example or a better solution would be to come in here and add a reference to something uh, called a node TypeScript definition file. And that'll tell the environment to go pull down the node TypeScript definition file. And you can see that the squiggly goes away. And now I have a rich IntelliSense experience across the entire node uh, API. So I can say var HTTP equals require HTTP. Oops, HTTP. And when I do IntelliSense on HTTP, um, then I get a great IntelliSense uh, for all the methods in there because we understand what the definition uh, looks like uh, from that TypeScript definition file. Okay, 
So a very simple uh, application. Let's go over to our index uh, Jade file, uh, make some changes so you can see what happens when we run. So we'll say, welcome to Visual Studio Code. And we want to run this, but we want to do a little bit more than run it. We actually want to debug this application. So I can come in here to line 14 or any line in my code, and I can set a breakpoint, and I can hit F5. And when I hit F5, we're going to start up the server, and we break in the first line of code in this node application, which is the Express Framework. We don't need to debug this, so we'll just press play, and then we'll hit the uh, breakpoint in uh, the code that we wrote. And now once we're in break mode, we can do interesting things like hover over underscore dir name, and for primitives, we can see what the type is. Over here on the left-hand side where we've got a debug viewlet, I can drill into all the locals, um, all the variables that are defined at any place on the stack. And uh, I can set and manage my breakpoints as well down in the, the, uh, the breakpoints uh, pane in the debug viewlet. So let's continue running this application um, and see what happens when we browse to it. So we'll come to local host 3000, and we can see we've uh, written out welcome to visualstudio.code. So that's it. In a nutshell, Visual Studio Code, building ASP.NET v5 applications, and building and debugging Node uh, and JavaScript applications. Thanks.